so thank you. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here in this, this beautiful city, in this beautiful building. Um, I, uh, I, we're having a very good conference going on now, and uh, I, when I was asked if I could give a public talk, I, I thought I, I'd really like to share a, a, a lecture that I prepared a few years ago to present at Minnesota uh, in honor of Leo Hurwicz, who uh, um, died at the age of 19, at the age of 91, a few, uh, about two years ago, I think. Um, Leo, I wanted to present that here partly because uh, Although Leo, Leo was born in Moscow in, in early 1917, um, but I know that he was here in, in, uh, in, in, in Petrograd uh, on, at the time of the October Revolution. I, I, once, I once had the great privilege of meeting his father, Abraham Hurwicz, who was somewhere between 90 and 100 years old back in 1982. And uh, he told me about being here in October of, uh, in, October 1917, that's November by the new calendar, uh, and uh, her, young Leo and, and his mother were on one side of the Neva River and he was on the other side and, all, and soldiers were, you know, he couldn't get across because of all the bridges. Um, but uh, Professor Leo Hurwicz was a, uh, from that beginning, was, 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 was a, a, an important uh, inspiration in my research and I'd like to talk about uh, uh, well, let's see. From in this site, I want to talk about first of all, tell you something about his idea of incentive compatibility and how it's extended the framework of economic analysis to allow the comparison of different economic systems. And in particular, um, I want you to understand that uh, Leo Hurwicz's work on incentive compatibility on on. on on, mechani on mechanism design, and, 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 and in which incentive compatibility was part, was an attempt to extend the framework of economic analysis in order to be able to handle the questions of comparing capitalism and socialism. Uh, in the early 20th century, uh, uh, the debates among economists between about the relative merits of capitalism and socialism uh, were, were, were inconclusive, and, uh, and, and Leo Hurwicz felt that this was because ec we, the fundamental tools of economic analysis were insufficient, and he tried to build a more fundamental theory of institutions that could help us to understand such different systems, and uh, I'm going to try to argue that uh, the advantages and disadvantages of private property or collectivization can be analyzed now within his framework using by models that have moral hazard and adverse selection. And finally, I may I'll try to talk some, at least a little bit about how analyzing moral ha hazard problems, not only in markets, but in, in, in economic organizations, but also in political organizations in the state itself can help us to understand the foundations of the state and constitutional limits on state powers. In particular, if, if, if the Russian Revolution, for example, made a fundamental transformation of this country that reduced the market and expanded the government, you can't talk about theoretically about what the effect of that will be unless you have an intellectual framework in which you study both markets and government. Uh, if you only can talk about markets, you can't say what happens if we get rid of economics and make everything politics. Is that better or worse? Uh, so. Let me say uh, inconclusiveness about the old debates. I, you know, the questions in the early 20th century between about capitalism and socialism were not merely uh, a matter of, of argument between red soldiers and white soldiers shooting at each other. Yes, they were also a question of, uh, of, of professional economists trying to think in, in academic, uh, reasonable debate. I think the truth is, if those soldiers had stopped shooting for a while and gotten to read the, the serious literature that, had been, that existed, they would decide that the economists didn't really know how to answer the questions and go back to shooting each other. I'm sorry, that, but that's, the framework was, uh, was inadequate. Um, uh, Baron wrote, I think around 1910, uh, I've forgotten the date, uh, wrote an early analysis of uh, what he thought would be the failures of, of, of a socialist command economy. Um, 
and von Mises and Hayek also uh, wrote su subsequent, uh, oh, well, I'm sorry, Baron, I think, was writing first on the socialist side in Langa, yes. It was uh, von Mises uh, who, who, who wrote the, one of the early critiques, and Hayek later, uh, Oscar Langa, in one of his publications, said that the socialist ministry of planning should have a statue in front of it to uh, the right-wing economist von Mises because he, by emphasizing the importance of prices, uh, told, you know, was telling the Minister of Planning that they should communicate with managers throughout, throughout the country in terms of suggesting uh, pri uh, planned prices at which the budget was to be evaluated. So, so um, in 1945, Hayek looked at this debate, which seemed to be going nowhere, um, and part of the reason, the basic reason why it was going nowhere, I would argue, is because Economists at the time using price theory were able to say some things about how under certain assumptions, a free market with capitalism could achieve certain kinds of efficiency. Are those assumptions always satisfied? You can argue about that. But regardless of that, a, a, such a theory, which is equipped to say capitalism under some assumptions will achieve uh, efficient production and, and, and allocation, an, an efficient allocation of resources, doesn't mean that a command, it doesn't say anything about a command economy. You, you can't say what the, uh, um, uh, so at some point, in, and in this very important article by Hayek in 1945, um, acknowledged that, that maybe his socialist opponents like Baron, Baron Lange and, 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 and Lerner uh, understood this as well as he did, he said, we're not arguing the right things. The economic problem of society is not merely the problem of how to allocate given resources. It is rather a problem of how to secure the best uses of resources known to any of the members of society. So different people have different information for ends whose relative importance only these individuals know. It is a problem about the utilization of knowledge not given to anyone in its totality. Different people have different abilities and different resources, and I don't, you don't know everything about my abilities and resources, and I don't know about yours. We each have different wants and different desires, uh, and, and some more urgent than others, and we don't know what, what different people would like uh, to make them happy or to consume. Uh, and so there's a lot of communication. And, and so the, the market, if it works well, or a command economy, if it works well, has a problem of communication. And if you don't talk about the problem of communication, Hayek says, you can't understand how to compare different systems. He then, by the way, goes on to say, the character of this fundamental problem has, I'm afraid, been obscured rather than illuminated by many of the recent refinements of economic theory, particularly by many of the uses made of mathematics. Um, we, I am a mathematical economist. We are mathematical economists gathered here. That's an attack on us. Um, let me say, that's, I'm sure that his statement had some validity in 1945, but it's not a failure of mathematics. The, the beauty of mathematics, Leo Hurwitz understood, and that's the important thing, and you and I should understand, is that it gives a very general structure in which you can build logical frameworks to logical models to analyze almost any kind of situation. So if people in 1945 who used mathematics and economics were analyzing the wrong models to, to come to grips with this comparison, that doesn't mean mathematics can't do it. Uh, in fact, uh, Leo Hurwitz understood then, this was before I was born, uh, but, uh, and, I, and I can understand today that, that, that if, if there are some fundamental questions that our current conceptual structure doesn't, deal, doesn't enable us to deal with, to build a new theoretical structure, Mathematics is going to give us is going to give us the tools, if anything, that, that we have can understand it, to, to understand these things. So, Leo Hurwitz took up this challenge. Uh, the challenge for, uh, Hayek put the question as being it's about communication, and but he he was uh, Hayek was pessimistic about whether mathem mathematical economists could do anything. Hurwitz understood that mathematical economists once they understand. It's only a question of finding the right mathematics, uh, right, right kinds of mathematical models should be able to do the basic work of extending the scope of economic analysis to be able to handle these questions. How can mathematical models generate a framework for analyzing different institutions, and in particular, the institutions of capitalism versus uh, socialism? So 
So, so much of Leo Horwich's work was on analysis of, of different models of communication where different people have different information about productivity uh, and uh, 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 and, and, the, and the potential productivity of their resources and the, and the desire, their, desi their consumption desires. In 1972, Leo Hurwitz analyzed an old paper by Paul Samuelson from 1954 in which Samuelson was, was, study, was, was looking at the theory of public goods. And Samuelson arg found, he argued that some schemes for deciding how much, uh, how much we should spend on public goods uh, in our society uh, wouldn't work because people would have, a, would have an incentive to either over-represent their, if they're not paying for the public goods, they'll claim they really want a lot of spending, and if they are paying for it, they'll say, oh, I don't really, I don't really want this. Don't, don't charge me for, 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 for paying for the defense of our country because I don't care if, you know.